For the fourth time, the exploding sport of axe throwing has gathered its best. And in 2020, deeper competition, $50,000 in prizes, but most importantly, a chance to be called a world champion. It's time to sharpen your blade and steady your aim as the competition has descended on the south, y'all, so you know we're going to have ourselves a good axe time in the ATL. We throw axes for a world title next. Atlanta. Welcome to the 2020 Sinorama World Axe Throwing Championship. It is going to be a great day of competition. We are glad that you have taken some time out to join us for it. Hi, everybody with Evan Walters. I'm Will Haskett. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Happy holidays to wherever you may be. We hope that you are healthy and safe. But most importantly, our gift to you, a competition in axe throwing this year because, Evan, a lot's been taken away in 2020. This is a community that has really built up to an exciting day here today. It is, 2020 has been full of trials and tribulations, but thankfully we're all able to be here in Atlanta doing this world championship. And most importantly for this world championship, we're going to make it just a little bit harder on the competitors, especially getting into this championship. In fact, a board they have never seen before until today for this competition. As we get into the scoring of it, Evan, we're going to make it a little bit tougher to make sure the cream rises to the top because that center circle has gotten itsy bitsy tiny for this championship. Walk us through it. Oh yeah, absolutely. The one, two, three, four points are all the exact same, but the bullseye is now an inch and a half uh, in size, just the exact same as the kill shots for six points. Kill shots on available on the 10th and 5th throws up at the top left and right for eight points. So things have gotten just a little bit more difficult. And for the main competition, six players still alive in the double elimination bracket that started with 128 yesterday. A big $25,000 on the line. Again, it is best two out of three, 10 throws per one. As you take a look at the bracket and where we've arrived at this point, four players still alive in the winner's bracket, bracket A, with the two players waiting, the losers of our first couple of matchups today. And what a treat, Evan, right out of the shoot. Sam Carter and Mike Kump going to get things started a rematch of last year's 2019 U.S. Open final. Yeah, for those who, so, who took a look last year in 2019 at the U.S. Open, Sam Carter and Mike Kump were in the finals to take that championship, but it ended up being Mike Kump who won. So maybe we'll get a little bit of revenge here, but at the same time, Sam Carter is the current world champion. That's right. So you've got the two reigning big tournament champions. Again, Carter coming all the way back and winning this world title a year ago and trying to become the first to be a two-time world champion in axe throwing, which would obviously be a big feather in the cap in the fourth playing of this championship. Carter has not missed this entire competition in getting to this spot. And you take a look at Mike Kump, one of the more, I think, colorful competitors in the entire sport. How do they adapt, I think, is the question now to this new board. They haven't seen this in competition yet. Yeah, they haven't done, they haven't even practiced on these targets yet for what they were telling me earlier. So this is completely new territory for them, but they are really going to have to adapt. Both of them have fairly relaxed styles. So I think that's going to help them out. Again, guys that typically find the bullseye at a 75% clip or so, and you see it just about an inch and a half. Six, five. And you see already the early scoring advantage to Mike Kump, who finds the bullseye on his first throw. Carter just missing, so a 6-5 start for Kump. And this is what's so fascinating to me, Evan, in watching this, and you're just as fascinated as me, too, is you look at this, all of those shots right there and under normal play are bullseyes. Now, all of a sudden, an inch and a half, that margin has shrunk so much for these competitors to try and be that much more precise. And honestly, it's really interesting, too, because it's not necessarily the World Axe Throwing League that wants to make those changes, but it's the players and their quality and skill level has just increased so dramatically over the years that it's just had to get more and more competitive Five, to this point. And so now Carter with the bullseye there. It's I think everybody sort of feeling this one out in terms of what the scoring is going to look like and how these players are going to adjust because you've got two guys who are accustomed to just running to 60 every time they play with bullseyes and now we're going to have to do the, the sort of quick calculation of, okay, what's coming up with kill shots at 5 and 10 looming? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of back and forth, I'm sure. These guys are pros, but this at the same time, five, they've been only practicing on the on the five ring, which is typically what used to be a bullseye. So the fifth we'll throw, they have the option to go for the kill shot. And I think Mike 
Nope, neither one decided to go for the kill shot. They're trying to play it safe. It's still new territory for him, so that's not really too surprising. So how five, do you five. adapt to that side. scoring with scoring now knowing that the bullseye is a little bit harder to hit? In, <laughs> will you go for those kill shots? You do sort of the quick math in your head as they switch sides here the for throw six. I think uh, for sure the, the number one advice I've heard is aim small, miss small. Oh, but okay. at the same time, it's uh, not always that easy. <laughs> the uh, kill shots may be something that they decide to go for to try to get <laughs> that they decide to try to uh, go up for but I think especially starting out as they get used to it we aren't going to see a lot of those kill shots you could hear sort of the, the the humorous tension in the room for both of these players as they're sort of navigating this new world as both of them with a four score on that last one and now a chance for Kump maybe to gain one or two on this throw and does as that one ruled outside the middle of the circle from Sam Carter should even things up here with three throws to go. I think stay pretty consistent then. We'll most likely see some kill shots, I'm sure. But it, the, the, kill, the new bullseye is so small, they're having to go up and check every single time. It's not quite as easy. <laughs> Everyone loves hearing the Ben McDonald head judge's catchphrase of 6-6. Six, six. Even with this tighter bullseye, these two competitors all knotted up, two throws to go. Kump definitely finding the bullseye there. That should have gotten the edge for Carter. It does. Six. And now the first big question, the first race to 10. And they're both going to go for the kill shot. Carter missing. Kump missing. All right, so it's a tied game, which means it should go into sudden death. And the way that sudden death is done, as our head judge said, the closest to the kill shot is going to take it. And that is just one throw. If both make it, they'll have to do another sudden death. But it looks like yeah, Kump has Kump. made it. Yep. So he gets the valuable first win again. Best two out of three in this match. A long night to wait. A quick morning to get accustomed to these new boards. What do you think after seeing that first to 10 with now Kump 1-0 in this edge? Honestly, I think Kump's strong suit is the kill shot, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him doing it more so than others. But I think, you know, that just really helped him out take the edge in that particular match. They had the one practice throw, so that the first official throw of Six, the second five. match, and that one just missing to the right for Kump, and a one-point edge for Carter as he tries to get back in this one. You mentioned how nearly perfect, or I should say every throw perfect for Sam Carter to this point in defending his world championship. It did have to go to a um, to a sudden five, death that he six. lost in the pathway here. It is the first, this is the first match where he has gotten anything other than a six. Three. Correct. But at the same time, he's gotten pretty much all fives with the exception of the one throw. And that five used to be the six. So it's kind of in his experience level so far, but I, a little low there. Yeah, I think just that slight over rotation. Four, five, if he had hit six, that, if he had hit that ax flat on the board, then it probably wouldn't have gone under that bullseye or that five area. With a one point edge. Sam Carter getting right back, though, flushing that bullseye shot. That one should get a five for Kump and will be tied up through four five. throws. This is throw five, and we are tied. Kill oh. shots are Many alive. in this room <laughs> thinking that All right. because they're both going to go for kill shots here on throw number five, but this may not be the only time they play each other today. Again, both in this. Bracket A, is that one just high for Carter? Is that one just left from Kump? At this point, I think they're just enjoying being here. They aren't too too worried about their, their statistics. Zero, eight. Whoa. Wow, that one ruled just catching the edge for Kump and the top of Sam Carter's ax, missing that final circle. Carter wants to go and has the ability to go over there and judge for it himself. I, I like a second look at it. All right, he's going to get a second opinion from the head judge. 
And again, any part of that axe touching the portion of the circle. Yeah, it has to be breaking the paint. Oh, the final call from head judge Ben McDonald is zero. The, for those who don't know, this is how that it, and this is how he scores. Is the there must be paint on both sides of the axe. If it is visible paint that you can see on both sides of that axe, then it would be good. But probably due to maybe the lighting, the the original judge thought it was good. But upon second call from the head judge himself, it was called a, a drop or a zero. So that breathes fresh life into Carter, though. But then could not take advantage with that sixth throw. And honestly, this is the time to make those second judgment calls too because each of these throws is gonna be five, just a five. matter of millimeters. So it's never a bad idea just to double check. Well now, if Still your cards are already down one against. in this match, Three throws left. you can make up ground certainly in these next couple of throws, but you know you're getting closer to needing a kill shot to extend this match. He's low on that bullseye, but comp low as well. Oh yeah. This is probably going to be a one-shot gainer for Sam Carter to get within Four, one. Five. And it is. It Again, it's those slight over rotations that can really make a big difference. We have uh, a lot of people have started trying to adapt their throws to hitting flush with the board, allowing more area coverage on the axe and the target. But every once in a while, we still get some of those slight over rotations that just get it with the tip which Six, has led four. to many missed bullseyes. Now a three-point deficit going to the final, final throw, throw for Loser Carter. Line, you know where he's three. going. Kill shots. Five and ten. We're, going. Uh, We're both going up. Surprise here that Kump's going to go for it for the three-point lead. He's pretty, good at, he's pretty good at these kill shots, but I think just out of an interesting bit of sportsmanship, they all like to try to go up and just yeah, kind of, you know, keep it together. Zero, zero. My At this point, they aren't super worried about the, the statistics of it since they're here this year. I think they're just in it for a good time. So Kump takes that one with both of them missing the kill shots. And that will move him on into the finals of the winner's bracket with a two games to one nothing win over Sam Carter in that opening one. So the rematch of last year's US Open, the reigning champion will now have to play his way out of the B bracket coming up. Boy, great action early. The 2020 Sinorama World Axe Throwing Championship is brought to you by specialty throwing axes from the WATL. Buy yours today at worldaxethrowingleague.com. And by Bad Axe Throwing. Book your event today at badaxethrowing.com. Com. First semifinal from bracket A in the books. Mike Kump advancing over Sam Carter, and Mike now joining us after the victory. All right, you're the guinea pig today, Mike, in yep. terms of the new scoring. How'd you find it out there? Uh, turns out, not that good at axe throwing. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, good enough, I guess. Yeah, debatable, but, uh, you know, I had all this confidence going in, and then I was like, oh, four, five, four, five. And uh, yeah, things don't feel good. <laughs> How do you adjust though to it? Uh, so I really set low expectations for myself and uh, <laughs> worked out great today so far. Any other jokes for the fans out there, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Two guys walk in a bar. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, congratulations. See you next round. All right, thanks, guys. Yep. Right, well, we wondered how it would go, Evan, and there you sort of see it. You just kind of roll with it and flow with it, although it might be one of the best characters in the entire sport. Oh, yeah. That gets Absolutely. off with the, uh, the win to start things off. <laughs> so that leads us into the second semifinal. Again, these guys have advanced through the winner's bracket, so not with the loss. Again, with Sam Carter, the reigning world champion, with that loss, he will fall down into bracket B in a matchup coming up with Jonathan Morgan a little bit later. And now it's Ryan Smith and Nick Rich's turn to throw here in the middle. Six, and five. we'll see how they get off to the start here as Nick Rich on the board with the bullseye first. Throw two, Nick is up by one. This is both of these competitors' first time being live on air, but this is actually the second world championship that Ryan Smith has competed in. And honestly, his level of competition has just six, six. skyrocketed. 
I guess, here. And the sport shut down for much of the summer, but the last really gathering of the community was the 2020 Arnold Classic, and Smith, the runner-up in that one earlier this year, was kind of building momentum into 2020, and it's carried forward here to this World Championship. Yeah, we're really lucky that we were able to develop some technology and things like that, so we were able to do competitions online and people doing it in the home, so practicing Six. safe social distancing while still be able to compete in their favorite sport. Ryan Smith, uh, for example, is one who competed in everything online he could. All tied up, three throws in. Pure from Rich, just checking the left-hand side. It is six, okay. Six. Very clean start through four throws, and now the early first question on We're kill shot tied. tosses. Five kill shots are live. Are we going up? I'm going to explain to everybody, it's all or nothing here when you declare going for the kill shot. Yep. Ooh, it was pretty close. I think both are just shy of that kill shot, but they're still tied up, so. Zero, zero. Just missing on that left side. Yep. I think Rich thought he'd hit it. He's actually fist pumping and still giving it a little bit of an eye. Wants to double check it. All right. Which side still tied? Opportunity for one to open up a big margin. Neither do. Six, six. Yeah. Neither one of these guys have failed to adjust to the smaller target. This has been a very clean start to this match outside of those kill shots. Yeah, honestly, it may, uh, may be a little daunting <laughs> for some of the other competitors to see how well they have adjusted. But one thing I know for a fact, and speaking with uh, Ryan Smith, is uh, that is his favorite aspect of this sport, is he loves figuring out the techniques and the technology behind how the sport is played. So he, you can even see on his axe there, he has specifically six, crafted it six. to be square in shape because he feels that helps him in his throw. 36-year-old from Virginia Beach. Serving in the U.S. Navy. And you can see the precision, his approach, very mechanical with it. That was a nearly perfect throw, finds the bullseye, six, and will have a one-point edge with just a couple of throws to go here. In his first best of three. Ryan takes the lead by one, throw with nine. Mike Kump awaiting the winner in the, what would be the finale of the winner's bracket. That one maybe, maybe opening a little the shy. door. Six, six. Oh, the bottom of that flat blade for Smith finding that one and a half inch diameter circle to maintain the one-point edge. Throw, kill shots are live. And Ryan as you could see one. there, he hit flush Throwing with that board, 90-degree angle. Yeah. 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 Smith with the one-point lead. Sees Nick Rich say, I'm going for the kill shot. He's going to have to follow suit. And a miss from Rich, Ooh. which will immediately not matter on the other side for Ryan Smith. So Smith takes a 1-0 lead in this best two out of three. Oh, wow, the kill shot for Ryan Smith, though. Shot him to the front even farther than he was. Yeah. Rich knew immediately that he had missed. They get one practice here on the turn. It's always fascinating to watch Ryan Smith's technique as he is very diligent and very almost mechanical or robotic but it's something he's practiced i think he said he throws he's throw uh, tries to throw about like 10,000 throws or something like that is kind of what he expects this year just a little shy there already started Five, recalculating six. his brain what changed there which gets off to the one point edge yep Nick is up by one as we go to throw two. Nick Rich from 
hurling hatchets in Texas has <laughs> said that he's thrown easily over 100 matches, but this is his best accomplishment so far as making it here to ESPN this year. Six, four. A two point swinger on that one to put Smith on top through two. Round three and Ryan is up by one. And for those who are just getting into to the sport and you mentioned off the top how that bullseye shrinking matching the size of that kill shot circle which also shrunk down in recent years to try and make these throws a little bit more stressful for the competitors with the fluctuation that we could see in scoring today how do you this think that will four, impact the need for kill shots late in matches? I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a math equation you do in your head, but also sort of the long game of knowing that there's going to be more volatility amongst these best competitors. Yeah, honestly, we did see a sudden death earlier today already, but Five, because there's going to be a lot more variation in the points, I don't know if we're going to see another one. Keeping in mind, though, that these guys five, are the best of the best. So. It's, it's really interesting, especially this is kind of a, even though this is new for all of them, it's new for us too. So we're all getting to witness this at the same time. Both elected to go for kill shots, and I believe they both executed. It looks pretty close for Smith's Rich. definitely in. Eight, eight. And they both eight. nail the kill shot to stay dead even. Rich needing this win to force a winner take all. We are tied at 30. In years past, it's been pretty common to see perfect games and things like that, but I highly doubt we're going to see one here today. Now the question is, is a one or two point lead for Smith? That one Five, does six. catch enough of the inner circle for Nick Rich to stay just one back after the perfect strike from Smith. Throw seven, Ryan's up by one. Looks like they're both just outside of the bullseye into the five zone. Four, five. Ooh, that one doesn't catch the inside for Rich, and now a, a two-point edge for Ryan Smith. And, and we're three Throw throws eight. away from a decision two. on kill shots. Mm -hmm. You would look at it and say, okay, you've got a two-point lead. There's no reason for you to take the risk mm -hmm. of the kill shot. But now with the bullseye, the same size of the kill shot, you almost feel like that lead has to grow to three yeah. to feel confident to say, I'm not going to try and match someone trying to come from behind with the kill Four. shot. Exactly. We're probably going to see a lot of people being a bit safer in that aspect. And well, that scenario is likely not going to come to a hit here is Smith missing there yeah. and the two point swing ties it back up again that was two flush throws although Smith's maybe just a little bit left again he has to be just on the six, outside as well six. Rich coming up taking a look he gives that nod agrees Final that they're throw, both good sixes they're going to go for it. Again, Smith already with the 1 0 lead. Oh, man, I think we both we got both. Nick Rich is flush on there, eight, but eight. there we go. Just by a whisker on the top of Smith's axe takes us to sudden death in this one. <laughs> The crowd favorite chance to figure out <laughs> the eternal question. Now again, this has to be the closest to the kill shot. If they both hit, then they have to switch kill shots. But if they don't, it is closest to. And I think they both hit. Both throws are good. All right, we'll keep going. Second sudden death. The most we've seen so far on record is six sudden deaths. Throw again, going for opposite kill shots. So they're forced to move to the opposite kill shot. People typically tend to favor one over the other, so this kind of changes things up for them a little bit. It's been think, way off. I think that's going to be. And Nick takes it. Nick, Nick Rich draws even is the throw from Ryan Smith, low and wide of the mark. Rich closest, and we go to a winner take all.
Would you like to take it? We're taking practice. All right, they're going to take one practice throw. It's allowed between every single match just to kind of get them to recalibrate a little bit. But I think uh, after that practice throw, we're going to get right back into it. You see a little bit of relief on Nick Rich. It's a definite four, uh, definite five for Nick Rich, but looks like Judge called a bullseye for Ryan Smith. Just getting the tip in there. Throw two, and Ryan's up by one. Again, you're talking about throws that yesterday in competition throughout the entire year, you're not even blinking an eye. You're walking up there, you're taking Four, off. I got six. I got the bullseye in that one. Now all of a sudden that bullseye shrinks a little bit and you're like, wow, it's one less point that I've been accustomed to getting. And, and as you mentioned, this is going to be the scoring moving forward. So this is a preview of what 2021 is going to look like. Not to mention there is one more change coming that we haven't implemented for this tournament yet because it was a little bit more different than just shrinking. But next year for 2021, five, five. the kill shots are still going to be two per match, but you're going to be able to call them at any point during the match. Wow. So instead of just restricting them to throws five Throw and six, four. people Ryan can save them up three. for the last two throws. People can do them early if they want, try to get them out of the way. But it's going to change the head game quite a bit. We've almost seen, and we'll see it here in just a four, second, is six. all of a sudden. Ryan Smith has taken a sizable lead with his kill shot sort of looming. It's almost a competitive, friendly nature. Smith's already said, I'm not going to go for it here with a five-point lead. There's no reason for him to. And now Nick Rich has to go for it. Really, you can see the end of this match if he doesn't connect here. Oh, but I believe he did. That one. Eight. Just a gutsy call that he had to have. A gutsier throw from Nick Rich to get within three with the kill shot. 29-26. That put him back on the board. But to finish my point about what it means is it's almost like right now it, there's almost peer pressure involved, right? It's like, oh, he's going, okay, yeah, we'll go. It's the six, friendly thing to six. do. But if all of a sudden you just come out of the gates and say, first throw, I'm going for a kill shot to yeah. try and establish dominance in this match, you know, now you're right, you're playing more of the psychological warfare against your opponent. And honestly, this I've always said that this sport is half a mental game as opposed to just half throwing the axe. Any tiny little bit of just getting out of that headspace and out of out of what you need to do six, to be able to throw six. that axe again and again and again. Something like that, throwing a kill shot in the very first throw and hitting it would just devastate an opponent. That miss on the left side for Smith. Five, five. It did, but Rich unable to gain a point by missing the bullseye as well. And again, we mentioned three Ryan points three. is a massive nine. advantage mm -hmm. if he can maintain it here going into the tenth and final throw. Five, six. So there's the one-point gainer from Nick Rich to open up the possibility. Could he go two kill Ryan shots? Two points. Kill shots are alive. Ryan is staying down. Nick is going up. Ryan decided to stay down. It's honestly a safe call. Would have done the same. Rich hits. If that misses from Smith, it'll be a reversal. It is the three-point turnaround on the final throw from Nick Rich, who needed the kill shot twice, once to stay alive, and this time to get it done and move on to face Mike Kopp. What a turnaround when he needed it most. An absolutely risky shot, but man, he took it. Wow. Not once, but twice. What a turnaround. We'll hear from the winner right after this. Unbelievable action to get it done from Nick Rich.
two players still alive in the top half, the winner's half of the bracket. Mike Kump advancing over reigning champion Sam Carter, and then Nick Rich with an incredible turnaround just moments ago against Ryan Smith. He joins us now. Nick, unbelievable stuff, brother. What just happened there? Talk us through the kill shot, not just to get out of the second one, but then the two you needed in the third. Um, Ryan's an incredible thrower. I mean, he's a machine. Uh, mentally, you just had to come in there and be able to hit your shots. That's the only thing I had going through my head was, yeah, you just got to hit it. <laughs> oh, I could hear Rob in the background. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. So I, w I went for it anyways. Wow, you did it. Congratulations. We'll see you in the next round. Appreciate it. So Kump and Rich still alive and playing with the benefit of not having the loss. Again, you can afford still to lose a match and win a championship as we're underway in what will be the first of several matches coming up now in bracket B called the loser's bracket. We saw Sam Carter lose earlier to Mike Kump and now gets Jonathan Morgan here as he's really taken this 2020 championship by storm. So you've got the reigning champion in Carter against Morgan who's six, six. not just alive in this one, but will be in the finals coming up later of our Big Axe Championship for the first time ever. And this is a much anticipated Still showdown five, now as the three. reigning champion, if he's gonna defend that title, has to now come out of bracket B. Yeah, if he if he does not end up with a win after these three match potentially three matches, then it'll be, uh, it'll be honestly a pretty big confidence boost to Morgan, I think, to knock out last year's champion. Six, six. They have started. Six for six. We're tied at 18. In terms of throws and the bullseyes here early on. Now maybe the first sign of five, five. humanity from both as both missed the bullseye to stay tied at 23 apiece. And now the question, five, will they go up? Tied. They will. Morgan may have connected, is on the bottom side for Carter. It is. Eight, eight. Wow. Still tied. A nearly perfect start for both of these throwers. Again, these, these competitors here make all of this look so much easier than it actually is. Anyone who's thrown an axe knows that already the old bullseye, where the now five ring is, is difficult enough. Five, six. <laughs> Morgan now with a one-point edge. I think we would expect to see this level of precision from Sam Carter, who has been perfect with the old bullseye system. But what Jonathan Morgan has done today off of yesterday, turning a lot of heads and still maintains a one-point lead with three throws to go here in this opener. Peppering the bullseye. Six, six. And already, this bullseye is smaller than it's ever been before, and we're still getting consistent precision throws. Well, you made the claim, Barbara, Five, that six. we may not see a perfect game from any competitor. Yeah. If Morgan hits the kill shot here, he'd be one point off of what would have been a perfect game, even with the new smaller bullseye. Right, they will both go up. Oh, and Carter hits, Morgan misses, and the turnaround, and that's what the kill shot can provide. Wow, a nearly flawless nine throws from Jonathan Morgan. But the kill shot does him in as Carter takes the first matchup. <laughs> they could both get a practice throw and switching. You can see. Morgan like, well, that time I hit it. Or was that the first time around? When you're ready, these throws count. Should note that the match that Morgan won to get to this position, to make it onto TV here today, six, lost 60-52 yesterday before winning back-to-back -back in sudden death just to stay alive. Tied it 
perfect score of 60, and then 62-62. So he's been more than Six, tested. Five. But now we'll have to dig deep, down one, and down one point here in this second. Stands up by one. And honestly, this is three. really a treat, too, because Jonathan Morgan's never been to really any of our major tournaments before. So this is really, you know, he earned his spot here earlier this year, but six, before six. that, this is his first time in a setting like this. And like so many that are watching or that are here with us in Atlanta that have gotten into the sport, found it, and then loved the competition, have gotten deeper and deeper into it to the point where you're Jonathan Morgan, you've traded in careers six, six. to make axe throwing a part of your life now. Manufacturing, he makes his own axes. Yep. He said uh, his nickname's the Fancy Lad because when he first started doing it, he would go straight from work to go let off some steam and do some axe throwing, so he'd be throwing in a suit. <laughs> a little confusion as if they were both going to go for the kill shot, but the way they're throwing it, no doubt they were both going to have a pass at it, but I think Carter has eclipsed eight, him again zero. and has and now an eight point edge there gives him a nine point lead and just has to sort of mind his p's and q's the rest of the way here with that huge kill shot game yeah, he's really got to hope that uh carter starts messing up a little bit he might be able to inch his way back six five there's the start yep. You just have to get within the eight, which he has done, and maintain that. And then you're going to need, you're obviously, going to need help on that last throw. Ooh, I think he may have just, uh, Morgan may have just over rotated just a bit. Four, five. Oh, but no, he actually got in through the four, so. Just underneath. Now, for those who are watching at home, they have to go beyond the black line. So you have to be inside of the black line in order to get the higher points uh, the higher points value. But there, he nails that perfect six, bullseye. Six. Two bullseyes there. But again, with a nine-point nine edge 40, for Carter. 39. Morgan was going to need some help and also have to be perfect. He will not. Five, six. And this one, all but a formality going into the final throw. It is unfortunately out of reach for Morgan. Yeah. Both players They're both going to go up. Does not matter with a 10 point edge. There's no way. He was. Carter gains a little bit of momentum with this one to stay alive in pursuit, perhaps a rematch back. If he can play his way out of bracket B, Jonathan Morgan's run in the standard championship comes to a close. But he'll get ready for the Big Axe final coming up a little bit later, which I know we're really excited to be a part of as we'll get set for the next one coming up here in bracket B. But before that, off of his win to stay alive, Sam Carter is with us. It's been a, uh, Sam, it's been one heck of a run so far this morning. You run into the buzzsaw first and then get back into this one. How have you managed the, the new scoring and everything changing up overnight? Uh, you know, just got to get that smaller red dot. Didn't, didn't realize that on the first one, apparently. <laughs> uh, just did a, little, did a little worse than the first one, came back, and still, still got a few fives in there. They finished that up, but, uh, you know, I'm here. Any advice for anyone out there trying to hit those smaller bullseyes? Just throw better. <laughs> <laughs> Solid advice. All right, staying alive. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. So he will move on. Stay alive as Morgan is eliminated. Ryan Smith, who lost earlier to Nick Rich, will now face Garrett Knighting, also in bracket B. So again, an elimination showdown between these two. He gets five warm-up tosses as if this is his first match. And another one of those players that's arrived into this final six here today, Evan, with, you know, growing into the sport, learning to love the competition and his place now in it, in the community. Yeah, Knighting said that this is, uh, he first started doing it as just a family outing, just him and, the, him and the family just going out for something fun to do. And not too long later, here he is at the World Championship. Throw one. Winner of this one will face 
Sam Carter here in bracket B. Quickly back to the line for Ryan Smith off of that. I mean, just six, six. heartbreaking <laughs> loss to Nick Rich. Just watching Rich just pepper kill shot after kill shot. In fact, three in a row right, from sudden death and then through the third and final match, pushing him down into this bracket B. Both players start with bullseyes. And if you watch Ryan Smith, he Five, has that robotic six. style. He has a complete process from even taking the ax out of the board. He makes sure to brush off the ax two times, I believe. There it is. Back and forth in his hand. It is a ritual that he does to stay in his head game. Five, six. Players at the t top of their game, you'll see that same level of consistency with the strike. But to me, watching Ryan Smith, it's how flush the blade makes contact with almost every time. It may be a little bit left or maybe a little bit right, but a strike almost always pure, straight up and down. A lot of players, you know, again, like I said, this game is almost 50% a head game Four, and a lot of people tend to feel like they just need to relax and that'll get them in the in the right headspace but for ryan it's ryan not quite the opposite points. but it's just a Stand different down. direction instead to just up. be ritualistic about how he competes in almost that robotic precision just straight as narrow four point lead allowing smith to stay down here knighting has to make something happen with a kill shot which i believe he has gotten eight Six. That's a huge throw from Garrett Knighting. 24 from Payson, Utah. Actually counting in his day job and Ryan's up by two points. Again, to switch. started realizing that he could compete at the highest level. And that was a big time throw. Stay within it here in this first of best two out of three matches. Six, six. Knighting, I think, may be the youngest person to make it to the top six at any of our world championships. At 22. Oh, I'm sorry, 24. Six, six. Both the bullseyes there. Knighting trying to close left. that gap a little bit. Ryan's just not letting up. Six, five. Yeah, that three point cushion for Smith, which Again, looms so much larger now with that smaller bullseye and the potential final throw point swing. If you maintain that, you'll likely see Smith stay down, although I think you're building towards that being the likely outcome no matter what. That one maybe just high. Five, six. Speaking of that head game, yeah, there it is. You saw Knighting throw very early, almost as soon as he was able to, which I think may have just, especially with how flush that was on the bullseye, just a side glance from Ryan Smith, I think, took him out of his headspace. Oh, two-point lead because of that 6-5. Smith took an extra second to think about it and said, I will go for the kill shot here. Solid, right down the middle. And just to the left for Knighting. Zero. Out of the corner of his eyes, Knighting has to at least see that. I know that the throw is inconsequential at that point for him, but what a confident choice. Smith sort of flipping the script there and got up to the line quickly and delivered the throw after the one before. Exactly. So there are some throwers I know that will use that tactic to try to get people out of their own headspace by throwing quickly and early. So again, one warm-up throw before the second match of this one. Smith with one match in his back pocket. 
When you're ready, this is throw one. Five, six. To start the nighting wanted to see. Just to get a sense of an early lead after having to play from behind. And unable to come all the way two. back in that first matchup. With the difference between the five point ring and the and the six point kill shot, it really is at this top level of competition just a matter of a single point on and off. Five, six. Maybe a little bit of a recalibration here now for Ryan Smith. He's missed the mark on his first two throws. 12 to 10. This is throw three. Hiding two good bullseyes to start and a two-point cushion. He's got to be feeling confident about that. Six, six. Looks like he's starting to get back recalibrated again for Smith. Still two points separating us. Throw four. Knighting has definitely six, found six. his footing here. As he is four straight bullseyes out of the gate. Maintains five. a two-point lead here. Two and Knight is going to stay down, down with the two-point lead. Side. Ryan Smith has already said he's going up, so a chance to level it here if Smith can find the kill shot. And it may have done more than level it if that one did indeed find the top of the blue circle. Eight, five. An eight-five wow. score, so the kill shot from Smith coupled with the first miss of this second match from Knighting puts Smith on top Ryan by one halfway through. Throw six. Have to hope that that didn't phase Knighting too much. Yeah, it didn't looks appear like, too. Yeah. Like he's found the bullseye and Smith just six, off. Five. And we are all tied through six throws. We're tied right now as you're going to throw seven. 35 apiece between these two again. Ryan Smith already with one win in this best two out of three. Loser is out of the competition. Winner will advance to face 2019 Six, world champion five. Sam Carter with Mike Kump and Nick Rich still to do battle on the winner's half of the bracket. And we will have just four players remaining at the completion of this one. Three throws left. Garrett is in the lead by one. Change there. Knighting got a one-point edge, three hole, uh, three throws to go. That one may have missed high from Knighting, definitely low from Smith. Five, five. An opportunity there for Smith to get back tied, but could not take advantage with two tosses now left. There's still one point separating us. Throw nine. It's going to be really interesting to see if they can continue this one-point differential which might just happen unless Knighting missed. I believe he missed. Missile. Five, six. All right, so we're all tied up. All tied up, and Ryan Smith immediately puts his finger in the air that he's going to go up. We are tied our final throw. Kill shots are live, and both players have called kill shots. All right. Again, Smith already has the advantage. This is a throw for the match, if Smith could convert and Knighting could not. Looks like a solid kill. And that one just misses high and to the right. Zero, eight. And the run for Garrett Knighting comes to an end as Ryan Smith stays alive. Couple of clutch kill shots in that second one. And advances to face Sam Carter here in bracket B. Some solid throws. Puts away the loss from earlier very quickly. Ryan Smith stays alive as four remain in pursuit of a championship.
The 2020 Sinorama World Axe Throwing Championship is brought to you by Specialty Throwing Axes from the WATL. You can buy yours today at WorldAxeThrowingLeague.com. Four still alive in pursuit of a World Axe Throwing Championship. Ryan Smith, one of those four, just survived a bracket B showdown. Ryan, congratulations for staying alive in this one. I want to know how much does your process you. help you put behind what happens, sort of the, the emotional way of losing earlier to get back into the process in that one? Oh, I simply I basically used the first match as a, a stepping stone and kind of a practice going in the second. It's my first time in competition with the new Bullseyes, and Garrett is a very, very focused, very meticulous thrower. I knew it would come down to not hitting those fives, and I'd have to take chances. That's why I was taking the chances on the kills. I knew I had to do that in order to actually come out on top. So yeah. that's looks, what happened. Looked calm in doing so. We'll see you in the next match coming up. Thanks Thank so much. You. He will face Sam Carter coming up in the bracket B showdown. But we go back to the top and two players going at it. It's Mike Kump and Nick Rich, both with wins already today. The winner of this one, Evan, is going to be in the championship. Coming up a little bit later, Kump with that win over Sam Carter earlier today. Again, there's a look at his bio. And again, one of the most colorful characters in the entire sport. We've seen him on display through the course of the year. Starts off with a bullseye here against Nick Rich to get things started in this best two of three. Four, six. Oh, and Rich couldn't get inside the other circle. So that is a two-point edge for Kump to begin things. We mentioned how that showdown with Carter kind of three, felt like a championship duel. We may end up still seeing it again if Carter can play his way back through the bracket, but just had to be a huge, huge boost for Mike Kump trying to win a world championship six, six. for the first time. As he's facing Nick Rich, who showed us a lot of heart and a lot of guts in coming from behind against Ryan Smith. and then. You see, like so many people, wife finding it on Facebook. It was actually a wedding anniversary activity that she took him to. And now here he is on TV competing for a championship and learned a lot about six, what he's capable six. of doing in that match earlier against Ryan Smith. Yeah, I, uh, I don't believe that she had envisioned that he would be here today after just going for a nice little anniversary outing. With a two-point lead, Compass said he's going to stay down. Both players are staying and down. now Nick no Rich says stuff. he's going to oh. stay down as well. And with that new five and six area, that's the kind of safe plays you're probably going to see a bit. Five, six. A lot of people like to go up on the kill shot opportunity just to do it as a sportsman type thing, you Which know, side? which is perfectly We're admirable sure. in six. some ways. But, you know, when it comes down to a, a $25,000 prize in the title of world champion, you know, you got to take some practical steps. Play your way back. Back to back bullseyes though on throat number six. And so if you're rich, you don't take the gamble there on the fifth throw of going for the kill shot. But you're still going to either need to probably hit it or you're going to need some help right now from your opponent by not trying to go for the eight points. Exactly. He's almost betting more on Mike missing than he is on his own ability to hit. Six, five. He's not cashing in on that bet to this point. Now a four-point hole. Again, we alluded to for these best throwers, even with the smaller bullseye, the likelihood of them still hitting that secondary ring for five points is so great. So the biggest gap you're really going to see from the top of these competitors on a kill shot throw would be maybe an eight-five swing. But you're going to have to stay within three if you're a player like Nick Rich, and now this one's getting out of hand from him down six. Kump on fire. And he's six, six, got the dance six. to show it. Final Staying kill down. Shots are live. And Nick is calling kill shots. Rich has to call that kill shot in order for any hope, but I don't think we're going to see it. Yeah. Already done before he threw the axe mm -hmm. with Kump six, finding the middle. Zero. And that was one point off, even with the new bullseye of a perfect round from Mike Kump. And both of them will take one practice throw here on the transition, but that was surgical from Kump. Nine out of ten bullseyes Again, in that I, first match. I think that this is going to be the point 
kind of the breaking point for the mental game here. Mike Kump's been on TV a handful of times already. He's a well-known axe-throwing name. And Nick Rich is a little bit new to the scene, so I think that those, the, little, the edge of that and the, the weight of this particular match is starting to get up to him while five, Mike Kump five. is kind of in his element. Maybe a sliver of an opening on the first throw of this second match, although Rich could not find the bullseye. At least got to see a miss of the center circle from Kump, who f flows right back, Six, makes contact, five. and takes a one-point lead as Kump. Kump is up by one point, throw three. Misses from Kump, and that one misses five, left. Five. So you've seen the opening. The door has crept just a little bit for Rich, but he's been unable to find that one and a half inch circle in the middle. Again, this is just a game of millimeters, as you can plainly see with Nick Rich's throw. Six, five. Let's go. Just slowly so and slowly no widening that gap. Kump is calling down. Nick is staying down as Rich well. staying down again. Did this in the first matchup. In a similar spot down a couple. They both hit the bullseye six, here on this six. throw. You can see how quickly Kump is also saying, look, I'm staying down. I think he understands the advantage he has and the flow that he is in just peppering the bullseye. Absolutely. Rich playing it safe this time. Kill shot would have taken him up over, which would be nice, but it's just not worth the risk of getting a zero. Five, five. Man, Rich has watched Mike Kump miss the bullseye four times in six throws in this match. Throw and seven. Yet has been unable to up by two. take advantage. And again, one that's left of the mark. Four, five. And that one doesn't find the inner circle for Rich. Six, so even seven, with another three, comp miss of the bullseye, Rich surrenders three throws one left. point to his opponent. Up by three, points. three point lead, still not out for Rich yet, but it's it's inching away. Six, five. Let's hear the crowd kind of trying to implore Nick Rich. There's just a tiny victory in a match to try and make it possible. You cut the tension in this room right now. All right, two bullseyes, it appears. Six, six. So a chance if, and you know Nick Rich is going to go up for a kill shot here. Final throw, kill shots are live. Oh, oh yeah. and Mike Cup says, I'll go up with you. It's all down to this. Pretty close, Ooh, both right? of them close. Eight, eight. Both wow. with the hit, which means that Mike Kump will move on to the championship match. An impressive showing from Kump trying to add a world title to his U.S. Open crown from a year ago. Hey, you know, if you're watching the acts that these guys are throwing, you might see a little bit different variety in the tosses here. We've actually got a great package here for you to show you the different styles of axes that the competitors are using each and every year. The pros don't throw any ordinary axes. They throw axes designed specifically for axe throwing. The World Axe Throwing League has detailed specifications for axes, which include a maximum blade length, a maximum overall weight, and a designated handle length range. Throwing axes are not meant for splitting, so the blades are very thin. This allows throwers to focus on precision, not power. In addition to having a thin blade profile, the axes must also be razor sharp, strong enough to be a utility or camping axe. Most throwers have straight handles on their axes. This means they can easily release the axe, allowing the throw to be replicated and perfected. All waddle axes have a unique design and advantage. Axes with a curved blade, like the Ace of Spades and the Bad Axe, make it easier for throwers to stick the axe to the board with its curved edge 
while still having four inches of coverage. These axes are perfect for throwers who are starting out or don't have a strong throw and prefer a lighter axe. Axes like the Corporal are heavy hitters. It has a unique fishhook design and added weight on the back of the axe head. That weight provides extra power to ensure the Corporal does not drop when it hits the board. The Butcher is Waddle's most popular and unique axe. It has a full four inches of coverage from blade to handle. Its square box-like design also makes the axe easy to land, even on tough boards. After nearly a year and a half of designing and enhancing prototypes, the Butcher just recently became available on the market. As you can see, the axes used by the pros are unique to the sport. For more information, you can visit WorldAxeThrowingLeague.com. So he's craftsman with his own weapon to try and win a championship, including last year's world champion Sam Carter trying to play his way back into the championship match after losing to Mike Kump, who we know will be in the championship later. Will it be a rematch? Six, six. Or will Ryan Smith end the champion's charge as they both start with a bullseye here in this matchup? They will face Nick Rich here in bracket B for the win out of this bracket into the championship. Third match of Six, the day for five. both of these competitors. As there is, you see Ryan Spitt, who looked so cool, calm and collected as he always Ryan does against Garrett Knighting, or Knighting, I should say, just a few minutes ago. You see his favorite thing, we've talked about a couple times, the puzzle of finding the perfect throw. After every throw, sort of recalibrating and figuring out what it's gonna Six. take. Five. And a couple of misses now from Sam Carter have opened the door for an early Smith lead. 18 to 16 as we go to throw four. Trying to find the perfect throw reminds me of an old saying that you'll never find a perfect flower. And I wonder one day if Smith may just find Six, that five. singular perfect throw. keep making the bullseye smaller. I don't really know how you could ever identify what a perfect throw is. <laughs> Measure the length of the blade as both players will go up. Carter down three. Interesting call here by Smith to go up with him. Yeah, and he could have taken that bullseye and attempted to keep it there, but looks like they both got that kill, so. Maintains that you immediately saw the respect paid by Sam Carter to say he understood not only how good the throw was, but how gutsy the call was. Mm -hmm. To go up there with him and endanger an, an eight point swing. Yeah, Ryan didn't need to make that kill shot, but. Six, six. Wow, pretty close. Had to double check. There's still three points separating us. Seven. Three points is all the difference between these two powerhouses. Well, and if this gap, as Smith does find the bullseye. Six, six. If this gap maintains at three points for Ryan Smith, I can't imagine in any scenario where he's going to go up with them again left. for the kill shot of the tenth throw. But we've seen crazier things happen in this championship. That's correct. Carter going in a little bit faster, but six, certainly looking comfortable. Six. The question is, is the margin too big here in this opening match? 50 to 47. He's trying, Throw but nine. Smith is just not letting up at all. We may have just gotten a slight over rotation and gotten a five instead of a six. Six, six. No, just got the, barely got that axe in. That's the one thing I think Carter's gonna have to look out for, that over rotation. Kill shots are alive. Ryan up by three points. Both players He's going players. up, up three. Why? How about the perfect score? Yeah. Ooh, Carter may have just missed. Smith did not. Solid. A 64 with Zero, the new bullseyes. Wow. wow. What a start. What a statement from Ryan Smith in the first matchup against the reigning champion, Sam Carter, and even Smith takes a little bit of a bow. A wow. Perfect game. A like perfect practice? game with the yeah. new Bulls. Yeah. Practice. You said there wouldn't be one today. Yeah, I didn't think there would be. 
but I think Smith just showed us all a little bit of the talent he's capable of. And as they get one practice throw in between. These just count when you're ready. Good boy. Should be noted that Smith did miss on that practice throw. He hasn't missed yeah. in this match. Looks like Sam got it in again, six, but at the same six. time, is that still he over rotates just a little bit, which means that he doesn't get quite as much surface area as Ryan Smith does. Throw two. We saw that piece on the different axes as both of them six, find the bullseye six. here. Heads look somewhat similar to these two, but you see the size of the handle for We're Ryan Smith. Right Compare and contrast three. with these two guys throw and, and what it means to their technique and how it hits the board. Yeah, Ryan Smith uh, lovingly calls his axe the chair leg because of how thick and square it is, but he finds... Six, six. He was explaining to me earlier that he feels that the joints in his finger lock over the square Still handle better. continues to six, pepper the bullseye. If you're Sam Carter right now, found a little bit of rhythm, you've advanced to this you're point after losing early day to Mike Kump, and you're just wondering, what am I supposed to do against this guy right now? I mean, Ryan Smith is in an absolute groove, fully in the zone, hasn't missed in this match as they both seek the kill shot here. Solid kill shot for Smith, but it's going to be hard to tell for Carter. Zero, eight. Oh, devastating. Didn't hit it. And now the reign of the 2019 Good World side. Champion is in jeopardy. Brian takes the lead by eight. You already have a perfect score. I mean, the only thing that's going to allow, <laughs> the only thing that's going to get in Ryan Smith's six. way of winning this is himself if he chooses to go for the glory yeah. on a kill shot later. A commanding lead. It's going to be interesting to see. If they stay consistent, keep hitting those sixes. Ooh. Ooh. And sign of a miss. Five, six. <laughs> Immediately upon that miss, Ryan Smith goes to the his back pocket gets a little rosin out, maybe felt a little something on the release, but that is the first time he has missed his intended target in this entire showdown with Sam Carter. Ooh. Sam as well, I think they may be either getting a little too comfortable or nerves are getting to him a little too much. Six, four. Now the gap is too big now for Ryan to really have to sweat anything out here. I mean, short of a drop of the ax, you know, this one's all said and done, and for the fourth straight year, we will have a new world champion. A little high on that bullseye Five, for six. Smith, but even still. You can even see him. He knows he's got this one, but still just calculating what went wrong on that throw. Eight points are separating us. Ryan in the lead. Up. Ryan. Ryan is staying down. Smart Sam's move, honestly. Yeah, Carter knew. Carter knew, and the rain does come to an end. That was an unbelievable performance from Ryan Smith, who lost in heartbreaking fashion earlier today, but has found the rhythm to be a true player in this one. And the rain for the last year's champion ends with Sam Carter's defeat here. New scoring in the championship this year, the World Axe Throwing Championships. We've seen here in this final day, Evan Walters, exactly how this has impacted the competition in the cages and how tight that bullseye has become and what it has done to this competition. This smaller bullseye is the exact same size as our kill shots up at the top. You can see there that are available on the fifth and tenth throws for eight points. But six points for that tiny little bullseye has made a huge difference in this competition today. We have, however, seen a perfect game 
Will we see it again with just three competitors left? Nick Rich began the day with a win over Ryan Smith. It was a come from behind three match, including three kill shots in a row from Rich. But now faces six, Smith six. again for a spot in the championship on the line where Mike Kump is waiting for the winner of this one. And while Rich kind of shocked Smith, who won the first matchup and then was leading before giving it up, just had to watch Smith find full rhythm in dispatching of Sam Carter in a nearly perfect Six, match play. Five. Uh, Smith with a one-point edge. There you see the bio again, if you're not familiar with what we've learned from this gentleman here today. You see a member of the U.S. Navy. And see that commitment to process and discipline and everything that he does and now has a two-point edge six five inching just a little bit farther and a little bit farther away and it continues to make headway into the lead throw four Ryan is in the lead 18 to 16. Both of those flush to the mark. And six, there's six. so many great stats that are tracked through the course of the year. And as you guys you know, work to see who qualifies five, and advances and is alive. able to go Ryan's here as the kill shots are alive for both of these gentlemen. And, kill shots, so is Nick. and they will both go up for the kill shot. <laughs> Smith was a little bit in the zone, but it's part of his ritual. A commanding lead now for Smith. Eight, zero. Now he'll take a 10 point lead in the second half of this opening match in the sixth throw. But you know, the best in the world, you know, bullseye percentages in the upper 70%, lower 80% range in the old sort of scoring. Yeah. But there's no way of really measuring how many of those are perfectly centered to where this one and a half inch diameter circle now resides. Uh, how will that six, sort of shift six. how people approach this? And because you had more margin for error to yeah. get to that center circle. I think uh, with our leaderboards online, we're going to have a old rules set for percentages <laughs> and a new seven. rule set for percentages. So everything's going to be pretty much a clean slate going into 2021. I think this community right now is really learning about six, six. who was the most precise even before. Yeah, I mean, it was one thing to say with those statistics that we had online and on the leaderboards, but uh, now Ryan it's very lead. telling. Throw eight. Yeah, Rich, another miss. This one's out of range here in this opening Four, match. Six. He's really got to hope that Smith somehow well, he had, he had to have a drop. He had to have two yeah. drops. Throw nine, and Ryan is still in and the And again, lead. Smith, who already has one perfect score, the only perfect score of the day with this new tighter bullseye. The one pace for another one. The first official perfect score with the new rules. Five, six. And you know he's going to go up here and try and make it two of them. Because there is Final nothing to lose on this throw. The, the game is out of reach. Ryan, are you going up? For me, Both I would be going up shot. as well, yeah. just because there's no point not to. He's already high enough that he can't lose, but if he hits that too, it'll just further knock Rich out of that headspace, I think. Kind of continue the trend. Again, it's part of the mind games that it takes. There's wow. the second perfect game. Two 64s on the day and a bow from Smith and respect from the community behind because Evan, you didn't think we'd see it. Yeah. I didn't know how possible it would be. And not just Ryan once, but twice, one. and twice would by the like same man throw? here today. Ryan Smith has Here's found something practice. and is exercising a bit of revenge on the loss at the hands of Nick Rich, who, by the way, lost the first match between Smith and came back, winning matches two and three in the best two out of three earlier today. He's going to have to do the same against Smith here as they get their one practice throw in between. This is setting up. 
the championship showdown for the fourth ever World Axe Throwing Champion. Mike Kump is already awaiting the winner of this one coming up. There will be a pause after this match, however. And we will have the first ever Big Axe World Championship between Jonathan Morgan and Five, Zach Crawford six. coming up to just build a little bit more tension on those that will be competing in the standard division and the World Championship. One. You excited Throw for the Big Axe? Oh, absolutely. Big Axe is something that people have been asking for for years now, and so it's, we're finally happy to be able to bring it onto TV and six, in people's homes. Six. Just more competition with a bigger beast. Again, longer axes, Still one point separating all the way up to 30 in inches in length. And we'll get into the nuance of that throwing style when we get into that battle between Morgan and Crawford. Extra on that throw from Rich may have cost him a Five, bullseye. Six. It does, and Smith again edges ahead by two. 18 to 16 for Ryan. Throw four. The only other additive we haven't seen from the new rules for next year in this current competition is next year every sudden death will have to be done with a big axe. Six, six. <laughs> Shot five, Ryan, you're up by two points. Are you calling kill shots? Both players have called Smith in an unbelievable zone here, even with a two-point lead. No surprise he's going to go up for the kill shots because he has not missed. Mitch caught the bottom of it. Ooh, and a miss. It's very close. Oh, no, it does catch eight, a bottom. Eight. Wow, that looked like the blade may have gotten just under from Ryan Smith, but it does indeed find the paint. Yeah. Wow. Switch sides. I mean, you're, if you're Nick Rich, you were thinking there for a second that you had the huge eight-point swing. Mm -hmm. Again, that middle match kill shot was what sort of started the turnaround. And these two met earlier today. Six, five. It's honestly got to be a little disheartening going yeah. against the guy who's gotten the only perfect games on this scoring target set. As well, to have to see seven, him again, right? Course, 38, if you're Ryan. Nick Rich, you've got through it the first time, and he just got better and stronger. And the match is leading up to the second one. Is Smith is human with the miss there? Okay. Five, Goes six, to the pocket yeah. again. You can just see any glimmer of hope or an opening for Nick Rich getting those in his corner left, excited in the crowd. Ryan still has the lead. A little hard on that throw. That went perfect. Six, five. Max residing right inside that. Former bullseye circle. It's another large misconception about this sport. A lot of people think, you know, when you think axe throwing, you think you stuff you see in movies with these big, hard, strong throws. But really, this is a very precise game, needing a lot of finesse. Six, and how much six. is that adjusted over the years? It's Smith with a three-point edge trying to put away this Final match throw, because you have seen points. players with more Ryan aggressive down, throwing styles, but it just hasn't shot. doesn't leave the consistency necessary to compete at this level. The strength is great for making sure that the axe stays in the wood, but for accuracy, it's just absolutely terrible. That one may have just mitched from Rich. Smith stayed down to assure Six, himself of the zero. win, and he will get it with the bullseye. Does exact some revenge against Nick Rich and plays his way into the championship showdown. It'll be Mike Kump versus Ryan Smith for a world championship, but they will get a break because coming up next for the first time ever, we will crown a big axe champion. Put your hatchets away, everybody. It's time for the big lumber. The 2020 Sinorama World Axe Throwing Championship is brought to you by Specialty Throwing Axes from the WATL. You can buy yours today at WorldAxeThrowingLeague.com. 
We will have a World Axe Throwing Champion in a moment, but first, we're going to have a big axe throwing champion coming up for the first time ever. 64 competitors came together yesterday. Still best two out of three, and we are underway in this big axe showdown with just five throws Four, in each five. round for the competitors and two Good friends to do in battle in this one. Jonathan Morgan, who we saw earlier today, lost in bracket B against Zach Zeus Crawford. As he's taking a look at his axe. And Evan, walk us through. You saw a couple of things there. Why this is different. You'll see him starting from a little bit farther back and how we've arrived at a new competition in the sport. Bigger axe means bigger distance. You're not quite able to be quite as close up to those targets as you would with the regular hatches that we throw. But that's why we have them standing just a little bit farther back than usual. But uh, otherwise, the scoring is relatively the same, with the Six, very big exception five. that each match is just five throws. Yeah, quick one with the fifth one being an opportunity to go and for the kill shot. There you see three. Zach Crawford. He's got to win two matches. He's coming out of bracket B, the loser's bracket, against Jonathan Morgan, who went 6-0 and en route to his championship appearance. And now a good start Five, from Crawford four. has gotten up a point. As you take a look at Morgan, who we saw earlier today, long, losing to Sam Carter, but has been really good at this discipline. In fact, using an axe that he customs himself for this big axe competition. He's made axe throwing his life, and that one catches. Six, five. The bullseye for Crawford, and now he's got a two-point lead going to the kill shot call. Final throw, kill shots are alive. Zach, up by Cedar staying down. Jonathan. Jonathan Zach staying gone. down. Jonathan Morgan going up for the kill. It's the fifth and final throw of this match. It's a five-pointer for Crawford. It's a chance to win here with a kill shot, but Morgan way off the mark and knew it upon zero. release. So Crawford takes the first match. Again, has to win the best two out of three and then do it again if he's to be crowned the Big X champion here in 2020. We are taking one practice So a lot of these competitors are doing both, and as you mentioned, you're going to start seeing tiebreakers across all divisions settled with the Big X moving forward. How do you have to change your approach to it? It is quite a bit more difficult with the big axe because of the distance away. You are farther away from when you're throwing those axes. You have to be just because of how slow the rotation is with the bigger axes. That being said, you're still aiming for those tiny little targets, those small bullseyes that they just both hit. The difficulty has increased. Get a perfect score would be 32 in this competition. And you know, we saw lots of perfect scores in the standard axe competition yesterday. Very few players are able to just Five, whip six. 30s and 32s out in big axe. You will see a bit more variance in the scoring as Morgan takes a look and confirms that did not find the mark. Out of over 60 competitors for the Big X tournament, these two local club throwers together ended up in the Five, finals bracket. Six. It's just a powerhouse of axe throwing competition coming out of Timber Beast. And the young man they call Zeus has brought it here in this championship. You have to imagine how two levels of comfort. One, you know, Morgan had to ramp up play in the standard axe division earlier today before getting ready for this. Crawford's had his eyes and mind focused on this one the whole time as they both score just four on that throw. But then there's familiarity here. It's, you know, yes, there are cameras, yes, there are lights, but how many times these guys have stood across from one another and thrown against each other through the course of the years. Morgan calls kill shot, Crawford trying to force a winner take all match. Morgan again, missing the mark. Zero, four. Crawford makes it look relatively easy, wins the match, but because he came out of bracket B, we'll now have to win it all again. We'll play another best two out of three, but this one is for the title. So far, we're going to do it again. You have one practice. Would you like your practice? 
We're taking one practice. Our judge Ben McDonald sets the scene. This is now for it all after Crawford easily wins that opening match. And Solid kill shot shows a good practice. kill shot practice. I mean, he is absolutely feeling it right now. And if you're Jonathan Morgan, just haven't had the range or the touch. What adjustments do you see Morgan having to make here? Because you know, he was the favorite coming in because he came out of bracket A, but the way that they have thrown so far in the first couple of ones almost feels like the underdog as we start this deciding final match. And another huge start for Crawford. Four, six. Two point lead, and in this few amount of throws, a two point lead is really, can really make or break the whole match. Throw two. Crawford had to survive two tiebreakers in the bracket B finale just to get to this championship late in the day yesterday. As does that one catch any part of the inside circle for Morgan? Four, it does five. not, only on the black. And a big edge. Now three points for Crawford. Throw three. Backs up by three. Should also mention these two friends met in the round of 12 Four, yesterday. Six. Morgan winning 28-16 and then in a tiebreaker 28-28, a very lead. solid second showdown. But Crawford has been spectacular. Well, big miss from Crawford, but Morgan can't make him pay. Crawford found four, no joy in that four. throw, but honestly, not uh, not too bad for him. Still ahead. Final throw, kill shots are alive. Five points are separating us. And Jonathan has called a kill shot. Morgan going for the kill shot. Zero. Looking close, Five. but did not get it. Zach and the center Zach. circle was enough for Zach Crawford, who's won three straight now against his friend Morgan. And his one win away in this best two out of three of winning the whole dang thing. He's feeling it. We are taking one practice. what practice is for. You got to get that out the of the way. practice throw, but Morgan's saying, if I could get one drop <laughs> in these next five throws, that might make my life a little bit easier. These throws count. Oh, great start from Morgan. Peppers the bullseye, but then Crawford matches within a second. Wow, what a start. Morgan showing signs of life, and Crawford wants nothing of it. Now throw two. Ooh, quite low for Morgan. Don't think that caught the center circle Six, for Crawford. Four. Oh, it did. Now a two-point edge. And how this only five throws compared to ten, how quickly things have to happen for you in this match as opposed to getting either help or a chance to dig yourself out of a hole. Yeah. It, with this few amount of throws in a single match, a single throw can really make or break five, the entire thing. Five. Ties won't do it for Morgan. Score is 17 to 15. Throw four. Crawford beginning this match, needing to win two of them, coming out of bracket B. Got it done quickly in the first best two out of three. Already up one in this second. Winner take all best two out of three. And now. The lead Four, is five. down to just one, going to the final toss. Final throw, kill shots are left. Zach, you're up by one point. Yeah. Zach Crawford is staying, staying down. Staying down. Jonathan. Zach's going up. Oh, and Crawford changes his mind, decides to go up. Down, Morgan's Jonathan. staying down. Jonathan's nope, nope. Up. And Morgan's going up. Some sportsmanship here. Crawford and hits it on the button. Morgan not realizing he made it and gives his friend a hug. What a four-match run 
by Zach Crawford to become the first Big Axe champion. Wow. Needed something a magical, magical to happen, it did. But coming up next, we'll crown a world champion as Kump and Smith do battle. The 2020 Sinorama World Axe Throwing Championship is brought to you by Specialty Throwing Axes from the WATL. Buy yours today at WorldAxeThrowingLeague.com. And by Bad Axe Throwing. Book your event today at BadAxeThrowing.com. It is time to crown a champion. Either Mike Kump or Ryan Smith is going to be the 2020 World Axe Throwing Champion with one warm-up toss in front of them. We will get things started. Six, we had one warm-up toss. Kump has advanced out of bracket A, the winner's bracket, which means Ryan Smith's going to have to win two best two out of threes if he is going to become the champion. But Evan Walters, the way that he played after his initial loss of the day, including two perfect scores on this tighter scoring system, I know it's a tall task that you're going to have to win six, four six. matches against the reigning U.S. Open champion, Mike Kump, but it almost feels like it, watching these two We're competitors throw over the last Mike hour and a half three. that Smith is, dare I say, the favorite in this matchup, the way that he's thrown. Yeah, honestly, I mean, he just kind of came out of nowhere. He's uh, never been onto any of our larger tournaments, at least this far in any of them. But... Uh, six. It's, uh, he's shown an extre extremely impressive talent that and now has a one-point lead over Ryan Mike Kump, who has become one of the faces this of this sport, 30-year-old. Plays out of Chopper's Hatchet House. Won pretty much everything in the 2019 slate with the exception of this world championship. This would be sort of the final major win of his illustrious Five, career. Six. And now is tied up, up again as Smith with the first miss of this one and a decision coming here right now, throw five, kill shot on kill line. shots and I think you're going to see both shot. of these guys go kill shot every time unless the map dictates that you shouldn't. It should do it. Eight, eight. And you've gotten to know a lot of Ryan Smith over the course of this afternoon is the runner-up at the 2020 Arnold Classic earlier this year, really the last major competition before everything went on hiatus. So it was six, trending six. that form and a heartbreaking defeat to Nick Rich earlier today, but ever since then, partner, man, Smith has been, as we talked about, that dedicated, robotic-type rhythm and routine. Nearly perfect. And something you can tell from Kump, too. He, Unusual I feel like he's really five, starting to five. feel a little bit. You can tell him hit each of his throws. Normally, he's a little more relaxed, but up against the machine of Ryan Smith left. and how precise he is, I think he, Kump is taking it a little more seriously than a lot of competitions we've seen him in in the past. Six, six. You know, normally sort of dance around after a good swing or a target hit. Kind of looks over and watches Smith just pepper the middle of the board. Knows that he has to ratchet up the focus a little bit more as this one's coming down to perhaps that one final kill shot throw. And they will indeed be tied going six, to the 10th and final six. throw. Does anybody play possum? Kill shots are live. We're tied. No. Both players have called kill shots. You can almost foresee a potential head game where someone says, now I'm going to stay down. Yeah. Does it make the other person think? I may no have just missed. Zero, eight. And it did from Cup. So an early win from Ryan Smith takes the first match in this, what he hopes is the first best two of three. 
taking one practice. And again, competitors given a chance to practice once between the scoring reset. A couple try and fix that kill shot miss from just a moment ago. Yeah, especially with those kill shots, you don't get a chance to do them very often. Only twice a match, optionally. So it's always good to get a little bit of extra practice in if you, if you need it. It looks like he Five, might have. Six. Smith may have not come out of his headspace a little bit. I think the pressure may be getting to him. We'll see. Again, Smith advancing out of the bracket B. Began two. the day as one of four still left in bracket A. Played his way through the loser's bracket with wins over Garrett Knighting. Then dethroned 2019 champion Sam Five, Carter. Six. Including a perfect score of 64 in that showdown. Followed up with another perfect score against Nick Rich. But has to win Ryan two Cowboy, matches two points, in total against Mike Cump. Already with one match in this first showdown between them. But since Cump has not lost this week, the Six, advantage of five. full winner's bracket riches. Is that one just missing high and Cump back within one? We're now on throw four. Ryan leads by one. And again, Smith needs to win again after this round. Since he's coming up from the B bracket. Just missed and Six, did miss five. again, just to the left. And you could sort of hear a few pauses in the crowd as you see Smith sort of calculating in his head. He's maybe asking if he can get another ruling, and he will. He'll bring in Ben McDonald for a secondary check. All he has to be doing is touching any part, including that outline. Stays a five. And it is confirmed on the ruling. So we are all tied up. Decision time now. This is so five. We're tied. Kill shots are live. Ryan, he's on kill shots. What up? Both players are calling kill shots. All right, both players going for kill shots. Tied up so far. That one misses well off by Comp. And Smith peppers the blue Zero, circle. Eight. And now takes full control here in this second game. And again, if he wins this one, then would force a winner take all two of three. This is throw six. 30 to 22. It's going to be a fight to climb back up for Mike Kump. Six, six. Both of them marginally catching just a piece. Throw seven. 36, 28. Walk me through the six, six. mindset of my comp right now. You've seen what Smith's been doing all day. You know that you're on your way to another best two or three. This one Ryan feels like it's already over. What are you trying to right gain now. out of these throws going into what's going to be a winner take all? Honestly, you can tell he's steeled his focus right now. Normally in past events that we've seen on, on Five, six. Mike Kump will typically be a lot more playful, a lot more relaxed, a lot more in the mood, but I think just the serious nature Ryan of Smith and how he's competing, and not to mention the the, uh, the talent in which he's been showing is definitely getting to come. So I think he's going to have to try to get back in that headspace of being a little bit more relaxed. Six, six. Which it seems like he may be working on. Dancing a bit. Final throw. Kill Out of that. Ryan, you are in the lead. Just Ryan trying to gain down. a little bit of an edge. Is going up. Smith will stay down, no doubt here this one in the bag short of a drop here just needs to board it and he does i think that that seals it comp though oh it's pretty close able to Six, make it eight. and does but enough for ryan smith that he wins the best two out of three that means we will have another one 
to crown a champion. And again, the breakdown of the scoring, Evan, and why it has gotten a little bit tighter and why what Ryan Smith has found of late has become so impressive. That tiny one and a half inch bullseye circle, the smallest these competitors have ever seen until today. Absolutely. It's the exact same size as the kill shots, which are the eight points, but that six and that five ring outside of it is what they used to be accustomed to when it came to bullseyes. But moving on here forward through 2021, those smaller bullseyes are what everyone's going to have to adjust to. So the advantage for comp out of the winner's bracket erased. Winner take all, best two out of three, $25,000 on the line. Nice partying gift for whoever finishes second, which we know has been determined. It's not winner take all, second gets Six, six! <laughs> so either way, one of these competitors is leaving with at least $6,000. Not too bad. we are tied. Perfect six, start from both. Six, still time. <laughs> this is now throw three. I think Cump's trying real hard to bring it back into his normal sort of relaxed state that he tends to throw well in. It seems to be paying off. Maybe a bit of an opening here. Five, that one just six. missing left from Smith. <laughs> Comp takes the lead by one. Well, tell me more, Ben. Throw four. <laughs> Did that one catch the upper circle for Smith? That's close enough. Ben McDonald's going to go down there and take a peek. Five, Did six. not. Now a two-point lead for Mike Comp. This is the first time really in four matches from Smith that we've seen back-to-back -back misses. Come. You're up by Honestly, I think it's really interesting to see how their personalities play back and forth. The, the discipline of Smith being shaken just a little bit by the kind of playfulness of Kump and vice versa. Earlier in the, in the last match we just saw, I think that that disciplined style is what was throwing Kump off. But I believe both of them missing the kill Zero. shot. Zero. If Smith glanced over, I think he would have seen on the body language of Mike Kump that he knew that he had missed. But that's three targets missed from Smith. And now you can see is recalculating what may have gone wrong. Boy, a real opportunity to seize control of this one. And instead, it still Kump with a two-point edge. Six. Six. Throw seven. Only two points down for Smith, but even still, that's going to be tough at this six. level to come back six. from. <laughs> it may just be down to a kill shot. Three throws left, comes up by two. Smith winning the first six, best two out six. of three to force this final two out of three. These players with one loss in this 40, double elimination 40, format. This so nine. That one missing Five, low from six. Kump. Smith gets back within one, but now goes into this kill shot. Kill shots are live. Comes up by one. He's calling kill shot. Kump gave that kill shot circle an extra stare, knowing that this is a huge potential first win to take the early lead in this championship showdown. And he missed wide again. That, looks that one like connects from Smith. Zero, eight. Wow. Confirmed. You said it would come down to the kill shot, and after a couple of shaky misses in that one from Ryan Smith, he gets the best throw of the match, and now is up one match in this best two of three, which means my company's back-to-back -back wins. Again, 
practice see. throw. Practice throw here. Getting the bad axes out of the way, you know. Seems like Kump is doing a little bit of calculation as well. I thought you hit the nail on the head, though. Two completely ready. different styles and personalities going into this and how those styles have kind of dictated six, uh, who's six. in control of various sections of this match. But it's become a lot more buttoned up, which certainly favors Throw two. what Ryan Smith's out there trying to do. Start. We're tied right now. Again, what a Throw wild three. day it has been for Ryan Smith, who's one win away from being a world champion. Came out, won the first Six, opening five. match against Nick Rich, and had him down in the second one to put away that best two of three. Rich by one. Kept peppering kill shots, played the aggressive style he had to. Stun Smith, who then regathered in bracket B and has been six, absolutely six. clinical since. Down one here to Kump, heading to a first critical now, kill so shot. Five, one point separating us. Kump, you are in the lead. Are you calling kill shots? Kump is going up. Yeah. All right, they both decided to go up for the kill shot. Kump has to make. If that's high, that may just put him out. And eight, eight. Oh, it does catch a top part of it. There's the zoom on it. I don't know if Mike thought that he had made contact with it. His I, body language did not show like someone who thought he'd made contact. Throw six. But got it just on the top I'm half of that blue one. circle. Maintains a one-point lead. No longer a one-point lead, it would say. Six, stay. five. We are all tied up. We're tied right now at 37. Throw seven. We're high miss. Five, six. six. See, Pump reacting to just the surprise from the crowd. 43, 42, throw eight. That might be outside the main circle. That one catches it for Smith. Is it four or is it five? Six, five. It's a five for Kump. Back tied again, two throws to go. The tension here from the crowd is just two intense as We're these two right throwers now. go one point back and forth, back and forth. Peppers the middle. Double check. That should be in the bottom half six, of the bullseye circle. Six. It is. So we will have a kill shot shootoff here. If Kump cannot connect and Smith does, Smith's your champion. If they both connect, we will have sudden death. If Smith misses and Kump win, hits, we go to the third. Kump connects, as does Smith. It's down to a sudden death. Sudden death. Kump against the ropes. Smith needs the win for the championship. And again, if they both miss, it's still closest to the circle. And Kump takes this game. Kump makes. Smith misses. Kump is still in it. Wow. Went to sudden death and the kill shot that had avoided him for a couple of throws. He finds it and takes us to one more. Got that kill shot. Throw match as they get one practice throw here. Wow. 
Talk about digging deep. I think a little bit of renewed confidence from Kump. When you're ready, throw one. Six, six. Starting off strong with a pair of bullseyes. The ebbs and flows of momentum in this Throw match two. have been just fascinating to watch. Both players just trying to stay as Six, true to themselves five. as possible, but come with the miss there just high. That blade did not get back in touch with the board. Ryan takes the lead by one point, throw three. We've played so much how the math can play into this, really any lead, even one point, with as accurate as these throwers are become absolutely Six, massive. Five. And now back-to-back -back misses of that tiny bullseye from Comp have given Smith a two-point edge. So here's a support from the crowd for Comp. Both of these players are very prominent in the community. That one may have missed from Smith. Five, it does. Six. So Comp within one on our first kill shot designation. This is throw five kill shots for life. Ryan, you lead by one. Both players have called kill shots. Like sportsmanship reigns. They both decide to go up. It hits. Eight, zero. And Kump does not. That may be the shot heard around the world. Yeah, that's a de facto championship blow. Throw six. Smith can just play the center the rest of the way. And Kump's going to need you know, likely six, a, a drop six. axe. Toss from Smith. You can hear the crowd just kind of trying to breathe energy back into something that just doesn't feel like it has. What it had a moment ago. I mean, an unfathomable would have to happen here. Because again, even with the kill shot that Kump will likely call, Smith does not have to go to it on that 10th throw and six. can take whatever score he wants on the board. Three throws away. From Ryan Smith right likely now. being your new world lead. champion. Looks like it may be a little bit of an over rotation from Mike Kump. Five, six. And now the lead grows to ten. Even with two a drop left. from Let's Smith in these last two throws has room to work with. You would expect Six. nothing less from Six. him than a perfect throw down the middle. Yeah. And now no reason for both of them not to go up for it with a 10-point lead. Kump. Smith connects as he found a way to do so much today. And Evan, Brian Smith is a 2020 World X champion. Surgical precision, incredible work. It's been a long year for everybody, but it's great that he's finally been able to make it this far. He gets the trophy. And it has become tradition. He's going to try and kill shot it <laughs> with the trophy axe. You can see how much it meant to him. Uh-oh. <laughs> and the back of the handle hits the board. But what a day. Incredible competition and a worthy champion. Congratulations to Ryan Smith, your world axe throwing champion in 2020.
Now the fourth world champion in axe throwing is Ryan Smith and collecting $25,000 right now from A.J. Titus, president of Sinorama. What an incredible come from behind it was today, losing the first match out and then playing his way back through bracket B. Incredible performance. Congratulations to Ryan Smith. We've got one more competition still to come here, though. We've got the duels final coming up. Really exciting competition with uh, two teams getting set to go and battle it out for one more championship here in 2020. But in incredible drama, including those final kill shots being the, the big difference and needing to win not just once but twice against Mike Kump. Ryan Smith able to get it done, your champion here in 2020. And Ryan, congratulations. Uh, what an, an incredible day. We wondered if we would see perfection today. We saw it twice in your run to the championship. Uh, just walk me through the emotion of today. Uh, the, the competitors were f like phenomenal. I, I knew right away I'd, I basically couldn't miss, so I had to calm myself down. Uh, my teammates uh, helped me so much with that. Uh, Wayne and Kathleen, I'm like, just can't think of enough people. My girlfriend, Aaron, uh, Rebecca and David, they all prepped me and there was a lot of preparation going into this. We replayed these scenarios. We pretended it happened so many times and it just basically played out just right. A lot of training went into it and these guys did the same. So it was a, some of the matches were a flip of a coin, but that was that's how it happened. You could see the preparation paying off. You can call yourself a world champion. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys, when you're ready. And now our attention focuses to the duels final. As it'll be Hayden Brown and Lucas Johnson on the right side of your screening. It's John Hout and Shane Shepard on the left. And they are underway, throwing axes here in this competition. And for people, Evan, perhaps unfamiliar with it, you got axes in the air at the same time. And so with this tinier spot Six, in the middle five, to shoot for. Four, five. You'll see the total scores of those axe throws. There's a lot of volatility to play out in this duels final. Absolutely. It is a completely different competition. We saw a little bit of it last year at last year's Worlds, but uh, this year it's just completely different, especially with our smaller, for our uh, bullseye size. You're trying to find a way to get both axes on bullseye, but without. Six, six. Wow, as he got a four bullseye toss. Just to give you an idea, again, the combination of both throws, you see the breakdown of this tournament, plenty of prize money on the line for all four of these competitors going after it. Brown and Johnson from Tennessee, Hout and Shepard from the Northeast, Hout from New Hampshire, Shepard from Massachusetts. I didn't know we'd see four throws that all <laughs> found that one and a half inch four, circle, five, but we did. Six, four. And you'll see the ebbs and flows of this combined scoring back and forth between these competitors. And as we saw earlier, this, unlike the other competitions, this is a single match. Uh, but it is double elimination, so Hout and Shepard are coming up from the B bracket. They need to beat this other team twice in order to claim four, the duels five, champions. Six, four. But if Brown and Johnson are able to take it, in this one singular match, then it will be ended and they will be crowned the duels champions. Shepard now didn't want to go up, but they got baited into it by Brown and Johnson in a tie score, fifth throw. Both seeming to lean a little left on those kill shot throws, but looks as if Johnson connected. Did Brown do the same? Zero, zero. Eight, zero. But an eight point swing. Could have been bigger. Switch sides. Teams will switch sides, as Evan mentioned. Hayden Brown and Lucas Johnson with the lead. Just need the one win to close out the championship. How Shepard need to win two as those axes collide on contact. As one of the harder parts of this particular version of the sport is you have to throw in unison and you have to have good enough aim not to collide against and knock off four, your, four, five, five. your teammates' axe. Six, We've seen it many, 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 many times. Throw seven. Jim Brown Johnson is in the lead by six. <laughs> 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 
much easier just to get some solid fives, which, again, per our old rules, would have been sixes. Would have been bullseyes. But. Six, four, five, five. Ten points total for both sides. Brown and Johnson maintaining a six-point lead. And again, all they need is to maintain that edge to the end to be the 2020 duels champion. Looks like they're playing it a bit safe, keeping their axes far enough away that they are going to guarantee four, four, four. they don't collide. And on the other side for Houghton Shepard, you know it's going to come down to probably a kill shot execution here in one more pass. Having to take a bit more risk for that tiny target. It's almost a good strategy, one might say, would be for one person to go for the bullseye and the other person to go for a five just to make sure you get a little bit of distance five 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 so no damage done on that turn and you know that Hout and Shepard are going to have to Final throw. Seven points for separating us. make the Kill gamble we're staying down after <laughs> convincing their you opponent to go up last time Johnson and Brown say they're staying down Two kill shots likely. It looks are close. close. This could be tight. Six, four, eight, eight. Yeah. Wow. A 16 score, but it was a seven point deficit to begin. So even though they hit the kill shot by just one point, Hayden Brown and Lucas Johnson capture the 2020 duels title. Wow. Well, the new scoring, we wondered how it would play out. There's a perfect example of how close and how volatile it can be. But the final champions of the day, good friends, Hayden Brown and Lucas Johnson, get it done. Now, this has become such a growing part of the sport, Evan, and people being able to play together and have that camaraderie and that teamwork. But this championship sometimes means even a little bit more than the two out there by themselves competing. Absolutely. And the great thing about this sport is we're still seeing new competitors pop up every day. Many, many of these throwers are here for the very first time for their very first large tournament. And able to throw their trophies as part of the celebration here. Well. What a year it's been, Evan, to get to this point, to be able to have these competitions and the joy on the faces. We get a new world champion. We get a new discipline for the first time in Big Axe. I know the entire community, not just thrilled to be here, but thrilled to finally have this championship and great momentum going into 2021. Absolutely. All we have left. <laughs> Every champion taking a turn with their champion axe, but everybody's just happy to be able to have something again. <laughs> As the celebration continues here in Big Axe, Atlanta, what does this now do for the future of the sport? The future of the sport keeps growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger. There's never been a stop. You know, a little few setbacks here with the current year of 2020, but still moving forward strong as ever. And once things get back up to full speed, we are going to be ready to hit the ground running with more and more axe throwing. It's your opportunity to find an axe throwing location. You never know. You could be holding a championship trophy in the very near future. Thanks to our entire crew and for Evan Walters, I'm Will Haskett saying so long from Atlanta. Incredible athleticism on display here today. And new champions crowned at the 2020 World Axe Throwing Championship.